All right, now that the uh, the Bondo is pretty much hardened here, you can hit it with a, with a sander, and that will knock down all the high spots that we want. Uh, the block sander is nice because as for smooth, flat areas, you can use the, uh, the actual smoothness of, of the, uh, the sander, and it will give you a nice straight line. Just use your eye to kind of uh, clean things up. Don't be too overzealous. You just want to knock really the high points off because we're going to go over it here in a second with, uh, with the putty again. This is the biggest part of, uh, of, of this type of work is, is cleaning up, spotting, um, and sanding. It's very time extensive, but uh, it, the better job you do, the, the more, it, the better it looks in the in the in the end. Obviously, we're doing this for film. Instead of taking three or four hours to build something, you know, it might take a week, depending depending on the job. Okay, I'll check our signs here. I'm going to kind of clean that up a little. These are so small you really don't have to uh, spot putty these, but we will want to sand them out. So you get in there with your sanding block. Switching back and forth between 220 and one and 100. Uh, if you, if you need something harsh, if you, you got to take something off that's really harsh, then use the 100. Uh, use the 220 if uh, it's more of a detail thing. Then what I usually like to do is just hit it with the Scotch Bright once I kind of get kind of got it to where I want it. That gives it a little bit of a it kind of ties things in a little bit. This may seem a little heavy handed. If we're doing spaceships and we want that harshness, if we're doing a spaceship prop or a model, you want to, uh, you want that sharp edge on there. This just kind of smooths things and gives it more of a one to one, more natural kind of a feel. Okay, you want to go around and anything that's anything that's going to give away your illusion, you want to kind of hit with the spot putty. Even though it's smooth, you want to do this just to just to ensure that that uh, those gaps are filled in and uh, it looks like a solid piece of machinery instead of a bunch of plastic pieces glued together. I taped off the trigger because I don't want I don't want uh, uh, getting new paint in there because it'll just it, it'll mess up the mechanics of it. I want it to be smooth. This is actually used for taking out pits and little tiny dings and dents in in automobiles. So most of this stuff is adapted. Uh, special effects business uses. Lots of different vocations, lots of different uh, trades, um, incorporates whatever we need, uh, whether it be automotive, plumbing, electrical, um, you know, uh, heavy construction, uh, like general contracting, uh, electronics. I mean, we, we use physics, we use atomic energy, whatever it takes, you know. Um, so, so that's that. That's that point up to there. Now we let this dry, so we're going to move on to some other stuff first um, uh, while we're waiting for this to dry. Uh, I've taken this, uh, the old um, barrel, and taped off the areas that, just to give it a little bit more pizzazz, uh, taped off some of the areas 
uh, that I don't want to paint. So uh, we'll cover this more when we move into paint. Uh, whatever you don't want painting, obviously you tape it up. So uh, I put gunmetal on this and I based it in black primer um, to block out the sunlight, uh, block out any uh, 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 light, excess light that's coming through. So this has already been painted. I, I painted it with uh, old flat black, two coats, and, uh, and one coat of the Tamiya uh, gunmetal color, which is nice if you can get a hold of it. Um, and now we can take off the the, uh, the paint there uh, the tape I mean so the the effect that we get is a uh, the light will only pass through the areas that aren't painted, obviously, because we, we pre-buffed this so that it would allow light to come through. Which makes it a much more interesting piece than just a glowing um, piece of acrylic on the end of the barrel. I, I, I put these little vent flutes in here, and you'll see what it does in a second here. As, uh, uh, but it just makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, and do whatever you like, you know, whatever floats your boat. Anyways, we'll put this back in into the unit so that when we put it on the gun, you get more of a more of a barrel kind of an effect, and you get that cool blue like flash suppressor kind of look which just gives it some more interesting things you know which is all about the wow factor all right so now we got all this spot putty that needs to be sanded out so we just take the, the 220 you don't want anything as harsh as as the 100 so you take the 220 and just kind of buff it out you want to run it flat to the uh, to the surface that you're you're sanding to Now this will eat up your your sandpaper really quick because uh, if it's a little bit damp, it'll clog up your uh, your sandpaper real quick. But generally speaking, all the low spots should stay um, be left alone. Uh, I mean, uh, during the sanding process. So as you can see. Now, depending on what kind of job you're doing, uh, sometimes it's good if you're working off a specific like art, uh, or conceptual design or an art uh, piece, or well, it depends on what your piece is. If you're doing it for fun, uh, you may want to leave some of the pits in it, um, like especially if you're doing like an antique gun or something like that. Um, it might be kind of cool to uh, to leave some of the pits in it because it'll uh, it'll give it. A little bit dimensionality, you know, something that's uh, something that looks a little bit more of the time period, because he actually spent a lot of time, uh, you know, getting it to look like the specific. Now this wants to be real clean, so I want to try and get out as much of this as we possibly can. I'm using a hundred just to knock this down, because my. My 220 is going kind of quick. Now, I don't have to get too crazy on certain parts because this stuff, this hammerite, uh, fills in. It fills in stuff. And you don't need any primer base for this. Um, but it, it, it kind of shell, it creates a shell over the, uh, over the area. And what I'm going to do is, what I'm planning on doing is using specific parts of this prop uh, here a bit of, a little bit here and probably this here this area here 
uh, will have a, a texture to it. The rest of it will, will be pretty much smooth. Basically, scotch Brite is like the equivalent of like 400 sandpaper, which you can use, or you can use 400 sandpaper. But I like this because it kind of buffs into the corners and stuff like that. Always use your fingers. Uh, feel with your fingers. Begin to begin to train yourself to see with your fingers. So, uh, because there's things with your fingers will feel that your eyes don't see. All right, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. Now we're going to get prepped for primer. Um, you could spend probably one fifth to uh, to like a quarter of your time just cleaning, sanding, prepping, buffing out. You want to get it as smooth as you can, um, depending on what the material. Is. Um, what we want to kind of do is take all the parts that need to be primed. Um, apart as much as you can some of the parts are in place and they're not going to go anywhere but we want to prime everything first so that we can see where the problem spots are so like little things uh, you want to have you want to remove so we're going to take off the switch here and you want to put all your obviously your little hardware parts in a safe place so you don't lose them if you can remove it, especially if it's a different texture, uh, it might be cool to uh, to take them off. Um, I'm going to see how much, due to the the speed of this process, um, we're kind of uh, kind of everything is kind of lumped together here. But this comes off. Um, let's see, we got that all taped up. Um, this will come out, but I'm going to leave that out. Uh, this comes off, and uh, you can use any color of primer. Um, I like to use black, just a black base, and just a black primer. You can use gray also. Um, and the areas that you don't want, I don't want to paint, whatever you don't want to paint, tape it off. Um, so, I don't want you know this area and I don't want the uh, the mechanism to get pain in it for the uh, for the uh, cocking mechanism here the bolt the receiver so you, you're going to be doing a couple layers of paint so you'll want to uh, get this in as cleanly as you can so you can do all your painting in one shot. The cleaner your masking job is, the cleaner the finished product's going to look. You can also use pinstripe tape. I like to use a blue tape because it doesn't stick. You want it to stick where you want it to stick, but you don't want it to stick to places that you don't want to stick to so I want to tape that off because I got I got other plans for that uh, that perforated material there
I could remove this, but it's it's just actually faster for me just to do it this way. You want to keep in mind any moving parts that you might have. You don't want it to gum up like in this area here. I want it to be kind of smooth and clean, um, so that uh, so that the uh, this thing can move back, this switch can move back and forth. Uh, just taking it off helps a lot. Um, I'm going to do the. Well, you know what? I'm just going to leave it alone. Now I'm I don't want this piece in here, so I'm going to pull this out because I want that nice and clean. But I don't want paint to get up inside, so I'm going to mask it off from the back side and then put this back in because I do want to prime that area. All right, the insides of this probably needs a little touch up. When, once you get it into primer, it's nice because it really shows you where your problem spots are. And what's nice about the black is it gives you deep shadows. Gray is good too, um, but I like the black because uh, on, on this specific type of item, it it shows uh, it. Uh, if there's anything hidden, it'll come out real real rich and and dark. Now this little switch is a little spring loaded switch here that releases the uh, clip. That shouldn't be a problem getting any paint on it. Uh, I think I got everything.